Well, good afternoon, Stratford Memorial. That was a pitiful response. I said, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Pastor, for allowing me to stand in this sacred spot where you usually stand, the prison ministry team, Brother Dolby. <laughs> He's been trying to get me to preach for an event like this for a number of years. <laughs> and I am not worthy of his patience and persistence, but I'm glad that he has done so. And of course, to all of my many friends and folk who are here, thank you, Sister Pam, for Pam's, Pam's family, Pam and Ron are family for me and Carol. Thank you for those kind kind words. I want you to meet someone. Uh, well, he slipped out. Is Brother Juan Suarez still here? There he is. There he is. When you've been in the ministry for as long as I have and you've preached as long as I have, you develop series and materials and so forth. And so I've trusted this young man about five years ago all my sermons and series are now in his hands. He's the president of Pandavita. And my sermons and my series that I've done for years, he now handles for me. And he lives here in the area uh, and uh, came out. He'll be here this evening to share some of the materials that he's developed for me. But I want you to know this young man. I really trust him and he's doing a good job for me. So give him a hand. He goes with me overseas, this place and that place, and we've been able to extend the ministry uh, that the Lord has given me now all over the world through the works of Pandavita. So thank you, Juan, for being here today. Amen. Let, us, let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that we can open now the sacred book and see what you have for us there today. What is the word from the Lord today? Today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. So you've gathered us here. As the pastor has so eloquently prayed, we have been brought here by your will. And so this sermon, Lord, you have given me, is their sermon. Mm -hmm. Knowing before anyone in this room was born, they would hear this sermon today. It's their sermon. May no one miss the word you have for them. To this end, we pray and trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go with me to the book of John, the fifth chapter. And Brother Lacey, what I like to do before I preach is read the word. Is that all right? Yes, all right. Just read the word. Elder Parker, good to see you, man. You're looking good. I don't know what you're drinking, but sell it because you're looking good. <laughs> looking good. Brother looks good. Looks good. After this, listen now, listen now, this is, this, is, this is the word of God through the Holy Spirit, the disciple John. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Every word in the Bible has significance. Amen. It's a feast now, and Christ has gone up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool which is called in the Hebrew Bethesda having five porches. Beth house, Thesda porch. The house of porches. In these there lay a great multitude of sick people. Now the scene is being set now by the Holy Ghost. In these, that is, these five porches around this pool, lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, 
waiting for the moving of the water. Now, I'm reading from the New King James Version. I don't particularly like their use of the word sick folk because the Greek actually says impotent folk. What we have there is now a group of powerless people. Impotency is presence without power. Cadillac with no engine. Are you listening to me? Impotent people, people who have legs that don't work, eyes that don't see, hands that can't pick up, ears that do not hear. Impotent. The parts are there, but the power is not there. Are you with me? Paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. Now the scene is painful because we have these impotent people wrestling against one another. Sinner against sinner. Come on, stay awake, y'all. The adulterer against the liar. Huh? Wrestling for help. In competition for salvation. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Verse 5. When Jesus saw him, somebody ought to praise God that Jesus sees us. I told you there's no word in the Bible that wastes time, Ron. I'm delighted to know right now today that Jesus sees me. Y'all too quiet for me. I said Jesus sees you. Ain't got no money, but he sees you. Come on now, poor as Joe's turkey, but he sees you. Mad and upset, but he sees you. Huh? Car won't start on Monday morning, but he sees you in your car. Huh? I'm not preaching yet, just reflecting on what I see here. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he already had been in that condition. He knew, trying to stay calm about this thing, he knew the man's condition. Yes. See, young lady, he knows your condition. Yeah, right. Knows what you're worried about, huh? Yeah, right. Knows the headache you had last night. Thank Aspirin you. did not work. Thank you, Lord. Excedrin didn't do it. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Thank you, Lord. But the Bible says here that he knew his condition. Now, you've got to wrestle with that. God knows your condition, but has not yet decided yet to fix your condition. See, that's your problem. You really believe that God knows, but he hasn't done anything. That's what's bothering you. Go on and say amen. You're upset with him. Because you done prayed and fasted that all the things that Pastor Reed said do, ain't nothing happened. See, I put it on you, Pastor, not on me. <laughs> knows the condition but he's not doing anything been there a long time and then he says to him it's a ridiculous question do you want to be made well now again I'm not satisfied with the NKJV but the, 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 the reading really is do you want to be whole now Understand the question, y'all. <laughs> He's not just asking him, do you want your legs fixed? That's obvious. That's an obvious thing. Why would you ask a man who can't walk, does he want his legs fixed? That's almost an insulting question. That's like asking a poor man, do you want some money? I mean, why do you ask that question? Of course he wants some money. He ain't got none. The word is whole. And we'll come back to it. The sick man answered, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Now Jesus is standing there. He's looking for a man. So you're looking to the banker to fix your money. Come on now. You want the doctor to fix your body. Come on now. Jesus. 
is standing there. Huh? Maybe somebody will say amen in a minute. Jesus said to him, rise, rise, take up your bed and walk. Now he's asked for help from a man to get to the water. Jesus skips over the water. You see it, young fella? He's smiling now because he sees where I'm going. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, he, he, I, I'm not concerned. The pool is a temporary fix. When Jesus fixes, fixes you, it's forever. Yes. Let's forget the water. Do you want to get up? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Mm. And immediately the man was made well. We'll come back to that. Took up his bed, walked, and that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. I tell you, dealing with these 70 Adventists is really a problem. <laughs> Always got their mind on the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> Lord help us. Yeah, what's, we've got to, I'm getting in trouble, Arthur. <laughs> getting in trouble. Uh, the Jew said to the man, Who cured you? It's the Sabbath. Shouldn't be carrying your bed. He answered, He said unto him, I, man has made me well, told me, take up the bed and walk. So they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know it was who it was, for Jesus had, Jesus had withdrawn a multitude uh, being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. The word there is Hades. Lest you catch more hell. It's all right, Adventists. It's okay. It's in, it's in the Bible. The word, the, word, the word Hades is in the Bible. Hell is all. You can say hell in church. Yeah. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. John's gospel is the gospel of all. And I, let me just do some teaching for a minute. The gospel of all. There's four gospels. Matthew. He writes his gospel to the Jews. That's why he starts with the genealogy of Jesus. He wants them to know the Messiah came from Abraham. Mark's gospel is laced together with one word, immediately. In Mark's gospel, he just wants us to know that if you need help, Jesus will do it right now. If you need help right now. Now remember, right now is God's right now, not your right now. Okay? But God moves fast if it's necessary. That's Mark. Luke, Jesus is painted as the ideal man, uh, the one who can relate to anybody and everybody. Luke is a Greek, only non-Jew to write a book in the Bible. And, 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 and so in, in, in Luke's gospel, women are lifted and, 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 and non-Jews are lifted. It, it's, it's, uh, it's in Luke's gospel we find the, the, the parable of the prodigal son and and, and, and various parables you don't find other places in Luke's gospel. He's trying to get people to know that Christ is that ideal man who relates to everybody. That's Luke's gospel. But John's gospel is the gospel of A-W-E. What does that spell? All. In John's gospel, there is this amazement that God would even deal with us. Are you listening to me? John is writing to the Gnostics who've marginalized Jesus and said that he was created, he was not really God. And so John begins his gospel with those words, and the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made which was made. John sets it straight at the very beginning. Christ is in fact God on earth. And then verse 14 of chapter 1 and then he says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So the Greek says, the word built its house in our neighborhood and lived amongst us. And so for the rest of the book, John is just shocked, David. He's shocked that God would stoop to live in our ghetto. <laughs> Cannot believe it. And so in the book of John, we have these amazing personal stories in chapter 2, the wedding, and 
chapter 3, Nicodemus, and chapter 4, the woman by the well. I'll talk about her this afternoon. And then, and then in this, this fifth chapter, this man by the well. And, and John is telling us that, that Jesus takes personal time with you. He'll stop by your house, if necessary, to your wedding. He'll come to your rooftop at night and talk to you about your need to be converted. He'll, he'll stop at your well and offer you water that will never, ever leave, that you'll never have to drink again. And he'll stop at your pool where you lie in your mess and offer you wholeness. My subject is imprisoned. Everybody's imprisoned. Brother Dolby, you don't have to go down to the county jail to find people locked up. I said you do not have to go to the county jail to find people locked up. Somebody sitting here right now is locked up in hate and locked up in fear and locked up in doubt and locked up in worry and locked up in problems. A lot of, I, in fact, let, let, let me make it plain. Everybody sitting in this church today is in jail. I read my Bible, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Did you not read that? Does not the Bible proclaim all of us in jail? Bryson trying to give me my next text. All right, I'll use it. He says in Luke 4, 16, just shut up and let me preach. He says in Luke 4, <laughs> Luke 4, he says in Luke 4, I came to set the captives free. He was talking about all of us. So, so what's so gripping to me in chapter 5 is the various prisons that these folk are in. See, it's the sheep pool. It's already a smelly place. The sheep that are going to be slaughtered in the temple are brought there. They defecate as they walk in. The sheep are tired. They're sweating and oily. There's this putrid smell. But as Jesus comes toward this sheep gate, he smells a stink greater than the stink of animals. It's the stink of broken people, people with sores oozing pus with beds that have not been washed, with bodies that have not been showered, that have not known deodorant, with hair that has not been cleaned and, and combed. All these people are there. And the sight of it touches the heart of the creator who breathed into nostrils, Adam's nostrils, the breath of life, whole and perfect without blemish. And one of the things that Satan does all the years that Christ is on this planet is to make him sorry that he made mankind. How could these be the sons of Adam? How could these be the daughters of Eve? How could this mess around this fool? Look, Jesus, what you came down here for. Pack up your bags. Go back to glory. They're not worth saving. I'm going to show you them crippled. I'm going to show you them blind. I'll show you them without sight. I'll show you them who cannot hear. I'll show you them who cannot walk. I'll show you them wrapped in dirt and smell and ugliness. Let me look at them. Do you really think, Jesus, that you can set these people free? And every day that you're alive, young man, the devil talks to Christ about you. Look at him. Look at what he's done. Look at how he's thinking. Look where she's been. Look what she eats. Look what he smokes. Look at the things he thinks wise in private. How in the world do you think you're going to save him? You're right. What makes you think you can bring him to glory? Give up on him. And I hear my Jesus say, my blood is sufficient for this man. You better be thankful today for an undiscouraged Savior. Because there are times when you're wallowing in your mess and the devil has so much evidence against you that if Jesus counted up the evidence, you could not be saved. But he turns to the Father and says, I cover right with my righteousness. And so God does not see me. God sees Jesus. There they are. Smelly and messed up and torn up and 
unworthy, blind. The Bible describes them blind and halt and paralyzed and lame and impotent. Powerless. Powerless. That's a terrible feeling. Powerless. You ever needed money? And couldn't get no money? That's a powerless feeling. Come on now. We're just talking about rent money. I ain't trying to buy no mansion. I just want to pay my rent in my apartment, my two-room apartment. That's all I want to do. And ain't got that. Powerless. Huh? Yeah, I just want to get up in the morning and go to work. But my back is aching so bad from the yesterday's work. And I take all the pills I know to take and I'm still hurting. Powerless. Been married to the Negro for 55 years. <laughs> and it's getting worse and worse and worse. But the church tells me the divorce is not right. If I haven't caught him in bed with somebody else, got to stay by. And so they're powerless. <laughs> Impotent. It means no answers. It means that your problem has gotten beyond solutions. Mm. Listen to me. This text describes the condition of the human race. See, think about it. The simplest thing for God to have done once Adam and Eve sinned is just two of them. Just wipe out two people. Come on, y'all. Simple man. Just wipe out two people. Start fresh, you God. Can't nobody question you. Can't nobody argue against you. Can't nobody stop you. Just wipe them two fools out walking around in them big bodies with them aprons on, their rear end sticking out. Just wipe them out. And start fresh. Come on, somebody. Simple thing to do. But the God we serve has answers that we don't think of. I'm saying, wipe them out. God says, no, save them. How are you going to save them? I will become them. I will take on their sins, wear their sins myself, and then die for their sins, and then I will remain their brother and sister for eternity, always related to the human race. Now, what kind of a plan is that? It's the plan of someone who loves beyond expression. Better be glad I wasn't God. <laughs> None of y'all would have been here. Just remake them. Set two new people in. He's taken thousands of years. He waited for you to be born. See, I've been thinking about that thing, Pam. He could have showed up in 1900. I was born in 42, y'all. He waited around for me. Come on, pastor. <laughs> This is the God we serve. This is, I'm building up to something. This is the stretch that he makes for you. Don't ever let the devil tell you you're not worth anything. God stretches himself for you. You should have died this past week in your sins. While you were sitting, God kept breath in your body. While you were driving to the wrong place, God kept you from having an accident. That's the God I serve. And when the devil said, I got him, the Lord said, no, you don't. So you lived through your sinning this week and walked in church, coat, tie, red tie, matching little thing up there, white shirt, mm -hmm, shiny shoes. My shoes are shiny, y'all shiny. Well, looking good. Hey, there's the pastor. And Jesus lets me have reputation and status and presence and covers my sins with his righteousness. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. And when the devil starts reading my list of sins, 
that their Lord says, I didn't blot it. He prayed for him last night. There ain't no record. And the devil says, wait, I was there when he did it. Sorry, look in the book. All I see is pages covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Cannot find, cannot find any evidence against this man. Huh? So here they are. I know where I am. I'm in John 5. I'm in John 5. Here they are. It's a mess. It's a mess. Now, verse 3, verse 4, lets us know we waste our time a lot of times with rumors. Notice what it says. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well, whatever disease he had. I checked on this in the book, Desire of Ages. Ellen White says it was a rumor. Nobody had ever seen anybody get well. See, if I smoke this pot, get this marijuana going, I'm going to feel better. Don't got quiet in this place. <laughs> if I drink this liquor, it'll take the stress away. Problem is, over the years, nobody has any record of anybody really getting better from that. Are you listening to me? Yes. Tried this one, didn't work. So I'll marry this one. Maybe it'll work. <laughs> but the stats that this marital counselor has found is that 50% of first marriages don't work. 80% of second ones don't work. 80% is a high percentage. <laughs> you know, you walk down the aisle and you say, I do the 80% 80, 80 chance of not making it. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of nerve. Now somebody's upset with me now because they, they've been married the second time. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Maybe you're in the 20%. God bless you. God bless you. My point is there are false remedies out there. That's all Pastor's trying to say. There are things that people are telling you that work. They don't work. And they're scuffling. And here's what's pitiful. The blind and all. They're scuffling. Can you imagine a bunch of, you know, why, why, why wouldn't a blind who can hear good guide the deaf to the water? And why wouldn't the deaf who can see help the, you see what I'm saying? Why are the adulterers in the church talking about the liars in the church? Both, both are going to hell. Why, why? Where did we get this hierarchy of sins where one thing somebody does is worse than something else somebody else does? Where do we get this idea that we can divide one another by sins? Big sins, little sins. I never read that. Where's the text about big sins? Show it to me. I read this text. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I read that text. The blind and the halt and the lame and the deaf in Memor Stratford Memorial need to stop fighting one another. All right. Let's all help each other get to the glory. Yes. Yes, sir. Well, let's get to it. So here comes Jesus. Ellen White says that there were so many there. Christ was actually concerned that if he healed them all, it would stir up the Pharisees and cut short his ministry. That's the reason why he didn't heal them all. So he went to the worst case. So I'm trying to encourage you, if you've got the worst case here today, then you've got Jesus' attention. If you're the worst sinner in church today, just stay by the pool. <laughs> yes, sir! 38 years. Amen. 
And he walks up to him. You want to be made whole. It is the word in the Greek for creation. <laughs> Elder, I need help to preach this thing because it's just, it's just too good for me. <laughs> ah! He doesn't just ask him, you want to walk. Would you like to be recreated? Could somebody just shout Jesus' name? Jesus! I did not come just to make you walk. You've got problems in your head and in your heart as well as your legs. So let's just cut through it rather than just fixing legs. Let's just recreate you. Let's just remake you. Let's just fix everything that was wrong. Ellen White says when Jesus got done with them, not only could he walk, he could see better. He could hear better. Ha! 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 His heart was pumping better. His circulation was better. I'm just going to recreate this broken man right here by this pool. So your prayers are too small. You asking for money. He wants to save you. You want somebody to marry. He wants to save you. You want a brand new house. He's got a mansion for you. Your prayers are too small. Stop asking for little stuff. Ask for recreation. I want to be made all over again. Fix me. Turn me around upside down. Fix me. Do you want to be recreated? You want to be recreated? Do you want to be recreated? Parker, I don't want him just fixing some of me. I want him to fix all of me. Recreate me. Because I'm imprisoned. I'm locked up, jacked up and messed up. And I keep trying to act like I'm something that I'm not. Walking in church on Sabbath morning. Calling myself elder this and deacon that and deaconess that and treasurer that and choir member that. And everybody in heaven knows I ain't worth squat. The members might be deceived and the pastor might be calling me by very precious names. But I know and God knows it's not real. It's a fake and I'm tired of being that way. And so I don't care what the saints say. I don't care what they think. I'm going to get fixed if I got to go back to the pool and get baptized all over again. Why? I don't care what you think. I only care what he thinks. Yeah. Fix me, Lord. Recreate me. I can't think straight. I can't talk straight. Every time I pray, my prayers are like ropes of sand. Nothing is changing. Come on, God. Take hold of me and fix me. Recreate me. Now, what I like about Jesus was he got right to the issue. He didn't ask him, would you like to be a better Sabbath keeper? Uh, would you like for me to loosen your hands so you grab the tithe when you ought to grab your tithe? You notice that? Uh, would you like for me to help you overcome your taste for Kentucky Fried Chicken and get you on Vegelinx? Often in this, listen to me, often in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we offer people Sidebars. Now don't get me wrong. In case somebody thinks gets Pastor Wright done lost his faith. I believe that the seventh day is the Sabbath. Yes. And I believe we ought not eat any pork, pig's feet, and things of that nature. I believe that. I believe with all my heart the tithe ought to come in. But brothers and sisters, if the heart is not fixed and the tithe is coming in, it's an abomination. Vegelinks, yes. carrot juice, and all that stuff, long dresses, nice. Makes you look heavenly. Mean as the devil, make you look heavenly. Yes. 
We're fix. Listen to me. We're fixing the wrong thing. So the Lord had to fix his heart because if he hadn't, then those legs would have healed and kept taking him to the wrong places. You got to fix the heart before you fix the legs. You got to give them Jesus before you give them Sabbath. You got to clean up their attitude before you change the way they spend their money. Let's start where it ought to be started with Jesus. Change my heart. Then you can change my day of worship. You want to get up? Want to be recreated? Now I like what happened next. He gives this pitiful thing about no man. You notice that Jesus ignores that completely? (laughs) Bryson, there's no discussion about the man. Because Jesus didn't ask him about a man. Do you want to get up? Well, I just need a visit from the deacon. We ain't discussing the deacon. Deacon can visit himself. You want to get up. You want to get up. The next text blows my mind. Before the man answers, rise, take up your bed and walk. Now, this was a movie. The lights would go low. Come on, Reed. And the drums would start rolling. And the spotlight would be on the brother. Right on the pool. Do you see it? Is your mind with me? Now it's up to him now. It's up to him. Get up or shut up. You see it? Come on, y'all. I want y'all to get in the sermon with me. This is, this is the moment. Rise. Take up your bed. It's all about what's in his head now. He can say, well, I ain't never walked. Uh, What you're asking is impossible. He acted on the word of Jesus. Yes, sir. He acted on the word of Jesus. When are we, when are we going to learn to just do what Jesus says? Do? Be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Well now, Lord, I know he's not in the church. But He's nice. Be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. And he, he, he works hard. He treats me nice. Be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. And, and, and he's coming to church now. Be ye not unequally Let the brother get wet in the pool. Let him make a commitment to Jesus first. Amen's are a bit weaker now, Elder. <laughs> but I ain't backing up on this one. <laughs> Trust God. Ten percent. He said ten percent. Ten percent. Don't try to bribe God with no nine percent. He can add. He knows what your check looks like. Ten percent plus an offering. God knows. God knows. I got to pay the rent. You ain't never paid no rent. He's been paying the rent. Just do what he says. Do what God says. My wife and I are going to buy a trundle bed. Trundle bed. Now my wife believes in praying about everything. Lose my keys, run around the house. Honey, can't find the keys. Did you ask God? Yeah, she makes me feel so, you know, I'm the, pa- I'm the pastor. I'm the pastor of 52 years experience. Did you ask God? Well, <laughs> I'm talking about the trundle beds. I'm going to buy trundle beds. Get there. 
They're on sale now. All the bed's gone. I said, well, sweetie, you know, just want the Lord's will. Let's go on home. She looked at me. She said, we need a trundle bed. Uh, uh, precious, the beds are gone. Let's go on home now. Go wake some other, some other sales. Some. We get in the car, go home. I don't know, she's, 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 she's eyes are closed. She's <laughs> get to the house. I said, sweetie, is everything all right? He said, oh, yeah, it's going to be fine. She said, I just talked to the Lord. She said, somebody's going to bring one of the beds back. I said, precious, the beds are gone. They're on sale. Ain't nobody bringing them beds back. Now, I'm the pastor. Now, I hadn't been pastor in 50 years yet, about, about four years then. She said, do you believe in God? So I've gone in, folks, you can't make this stuff up. This is the truth. I'm talking about taking God at his word. Yes. Ask, yes. it shall be, knock. Yes. Yes. I'm sitting down watching TV. Phone rings, four cell phones, phone rings, landline. Don't tell me what I hear saying. Okay, thank you. We'll be right there. <laughs> so I didn't want to be outdone, Pam. So when she walks in, I said, Somebody brought one of the beds back, didn't they? <laughs> she said, yes, Henry Wright, somebody brought one of the beds back. Let's go get the bed. Do you believe that God can do the impossible for you? Hey, we're living in the last days, folks. It's going to be rough out there. It's already rough out there. It's going to get worse out there. And God's people to stand are going to have to begin to believe that God really can do anything and can do it right now if he has to. All you got to do is just ask him, stop coming to him with whimpering prayers. Take God's promises. Hold them in his face. You said, you said. I've learned to talk to God like that. I take my Bible and hold. You, you wrote this, God. I need you to do this. And he does it. My son came back from that first Gulf War, all messed up in his head. He was a Marine. My second son, who's now dead, messed up, messed up, head messed up, battling with liquor and so forth. Passed your son. He'd leave the house at night. We'd just pray. We knew David wasn't doing right. Came son to my house one night. I had to say to him, son, that, that's not acceptable. Dad loves you. It's not acceptable. Won't happen again, Dad. But then he started staying out all night. We just praying. Just praying. Lord, you said. Yes. You said. Yes. You said. Yes. On the Sabbath of communion. Every morning we get up. We go to the church, son. He lived with us. Came home. Couldn't live by himself. He'd been hit in the head. He'd have spells, so forth and so on. We got up one morning. He was standing dressed. He was dressed, y'all. He was dressed. My son was dressed. Mom and dad, we going to church today? We going to church today? Got to church, his dad preached, the call was made. Rise, take up your bed. Stop mumbling, stop pleading, stop, but stop being weak-minded and afraid. <laughs> Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Believe God. And he got up and he walked out of prison, set free by the blood of Jesus. 
your heads are bowed, I didn't preach enough. Your eyes are closed. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, but the organist. Softly, hear my humble cry. He's visiting pools today. He sees your brokenness today and mine. He's got a question for you. Do you just want to give up the cigarettes? Do you just want to give up the pornography online? Do you want to just stop the sexting? Or do you want to be made whole? You want to go for the whole ball of wax today? No more excuses. No more almost fixed. You want to leave that smelly bed of your past? Father, we've been imprisoned by our own thoughts, our own tendencies, our own habits, our own struggles. We've gotten so used to being in jail, we've forgotten what it means to be free. But maybe somebody here today, I don't know who it is, has the courage to say to the pastor and to the church, free me, Lord. Just free me. So my first call is simple. It's not a call to come forward, not yet. You just need prayer. You're tired of laying by the pool of your own messy life and you need prayer. You want me and the pastor to pray for you. If that's you, would you stand right now? You just need prayer. You just need prayer. Second appeal, standing is not enough for you. Maybe you've been visiting this church. You've been thinking about coming forward, becoming a part, signing up for the pastor's Bible study class. Or you need to make the fresh start. See, what I didn't tell you was the desire of ages says that the man was in this mess because of his own mistakes. He used to be a faithful member of the church. His legs were crippled because his mind was crippled before that. And that's why Jesus had to fix his head first, then he could fix his legs. You need to make a fresh start. You need to come to Christ. Maybe you're a young person, you've been thinking about it. Would you just come forward here? To move where you are, just come forward. You're making your decision. You're going to come. You're going to come. Please, 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 today, if you hear his voice, come on, come on, pray church, just pray, just pray. I don't take appeals personally. God bless you, brother. Amen. God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else? Somebody else? Come on, come on. You won't feel more like it than you feel right now. Come and sit beside this brother who's led the way. Who else will come? Pray, church. Just pray, 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 pray. Somebody's responding. They want to be made whole. They want recreation. Are you here?
Just a choir leader, get that choir singing. Pass me out, old gentle savior, the first verse. Take the first verse. Help them sing a church. others. Sing it, saints. Somebody else will come. Please come. We'll be singing this chorus. Lift up the name. Say Hallelujah, Jesus. the course again. Sing the course again. Call Jesus one more time, everybody. Savior. Are you going to come? One more who come. pray now the pastors yet watching you can slip up if you want to notice I said if you want to God wants you to Come on now. if you want to father thank you for stopping by the pool setting that brother out of prison yes. but Jesus <laughs> thank you for stopping by my pool yes. getting me out of prison. Bless our dear one who has come. Shower this brother with grace. Merciful, merciful grace toward that person who should have moved and did not. Thank you for a ministry in the church dedicated to setting people free from prison. Not just the prison of bars, but the prison of self. Bless Brother Dolby. Bless the ministry in this church. Faithful prison workers all over this world who represent the Adventist church. Let your hand fall upon them afresh today. And thank you for this worship. In Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen.